Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to Mentalist on a Shoestring. Uh, Trying to get this review done because this throat's about to give up the ghost. Uh, obviously, I've picked something up and coming down with it, so I want to get this review done as quickly as possible while I still have the ability to evocate and uh, do my words, as they would say. Today, again, thank you to the wonderful Dr. David Goldman. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at yet another 1914 release. Um, I think I must now own most of their catalogue, I think, uh, is uh, Deep Breath by Matt Parrott. There we go. And I have seen this one. This is an oldish one. It's been on there a little while. Uh, it has... I've looked at it. Okay. Uh, but um, we're going to look at this one today because I think it's uh, it's got some potential anyway. So basically, uh, Matt Parrott is going to teach you about the Gill Breath principle and he does it in wonderful video form uh, it's about an hour and a half of videos um, so we can go through those and Matt Parrott has performed the hundreds of magic gigs a year at his residency the Oracle the UK's premier magic cocktail bar so there you go we know he's a worker and to be honest with you watching the videos it comes through as well but let's get back to the most important bit my notes, yeah, uh, I have got a few notes to go through. If I do glance down, I do apologize, I do need to look anyway. So from the 1914, for the mere price of 15 pounds, or quids, as we might call them in the UK, in dollars, I've got no idea. Um, you'll have to use your conversion to work that out. So, um, first of all, this is about, uh, I think it's about six videos. Uh, is it five or six? Five or six videos on here as well, usually from uh, 15 to 20 minutes each, so add them all together you get about an hour and a half um, so you get an introduction by Matt who explains who he is uh, what does he do where does he come from where's his daddy and uh, he will then give you uh, basically what the Gilbeth principle is it can be explained by very complex mathematics thankfully he doesn't do that I really like the way here on this video on this part of the video where he actually gives you a visual representation of how the Gilbreth principle works now he does also say in these teachings that you don't have to watch this part you could go straight on to the tutorials and you don't have to understand it to know what it does but he says his feelings are if you understand the basic underlying principles it will make it much much easier for you and he does and he explains it really well even I came away going ah now I get it. Right, so yeah, so you'll get a nice, and that is well worth going through a couple of times. It's, it's worth doing, because he explains it with cards. Uh, he uses some other props to explain the principle again. I'm not gonna tell you what the principle is. Go buy it and find out yourself. <laughs> right, so his first effect is called Out of Breath. Um, very, very good little thing, this one as well. Uh, here you'll get a performance with two spectators and an actual tutorial all within the one video. Uh, he will talk about the uh, setup, ways of getting in and out of this setup, because obviously with the Gill Breath Principle, it's using sequences. Uh, so you do have to know a little bit about getting things ready. It's kind of like a stack almost, but uh, definitely done. So he'll go through, but he'll show you how to get into the stack, ways of setting up and stuff as well. So with the Out of Breath, um, it's basically a colour divination. It's a very good idea of... And it happens in mostly in the spectator's hands when it comes to mixing the cards, which I think is one of the, as long as you can get your spectator to do a riffle shuffle, a rosetta shuffle, any form of interleaving shuffle, which to the spectator looks the most fairest, um, they can do it in their hands and you could literally almost do it without touching any cards. One thing I liked about the outer breath principle was it involves the spectator quite directly. And when you've actually done it with them to explain, you're almost going to use it as an, as an example. See, see if you're psychic or not. Can you detect the colours underneath the cards? And he does it. When he's when you finish with the spectator, you're pretty much set up and done. Uh, you will have in front of you, depending how good your memory is, uh, you can actually use those cards as a crib and a peek in one. You can leave them on the table. You grab your packet. They do it to you. And it's there, you don't have to, you can use, mem if you've got a good memory, you can do it, fold it up, put it away, or you can leave those cards out and then use those as a sort of crib and peak, which I really like. So for somebody like me who's terrible at memorizing things, yeah, that would work perfect. So beautifully, beautifully done. The next trick he's gonna teach you, and here we go with the naming conventions, uh, is called poker in the rear. Mm. Yeah, whim shop. Uh, yeah, so this is a gambling style routine using the Gilbert Principle. Apparently, I think Alan Morrison had some help on this one. He does actually name Alan Morrison, who again, he's a fantastic, really good guy. I've had dealings with him before. He's really nice as Alan. He's very, 
out the box and around the box under the box style of thinking and he has some really good effects as well but uh, i think i've already reviewed his stuff you can go and check that out and so basically this one again the spectator does most of the work and uh, it's using cards to get a straight and not only do you get the straight all the other cards are straight as well so it's a nice little kicker ending on that where he uses that lovely thing of um i don't want everybody else to lose and it turns out the piles that have been there are all straights very clever again if you're gambling if you're a card magician does a lot of gambling work this could be well looked at as well but the guild breath isn't all about cards um well it is but we don't have to use playing cards as we go on to the next one called lottery prediction so this uses um some cards that you may have to track down and he does explain in the video that you need numbered cards as far as i'm aware bicycle do make playing cards with just numbers on one to 52 so um if you have a little search around, if you want to do it exactly like he's done it, you can do. But it's also explained that you could use business cards and write numbers on the business cards and do it that way. It just makes it a little easier. If you're riffle shuffling a deck of cards, it's easy to riffle shuffle, but still be done. Um, so basically, you're predicting a, lot, a lottery win and you're doing it with a stack of cards. And I do like the fact that the props are very simple and easy to make. And of course, um, you know they end up with the winning lottery numbers and not only that you've got a real lottery ticket with the numbers on they would have predicted so it's a really good almost like a good pile of one uh so you can literally finish and you could if you wanted to give them the one pound lottery ticket if they win find them get them get money off of them basically but now again very powerful very simple but uh, i love the way that matt presents the effects something i'm going to tell you watch with matt watch his presentation very so some good key stuff i'm going to give you guys a quick hint a lot of people will skip the the, um, the demonstrations or the presentations of videos. Watch them, because there's one thing I'm going to tell you. Sometimes people will do something in the trick with the spectators, but they won't teach that on the actual tutorial. For them, it's like automatic. It's um, it's the way they do things, and it's so ingrained that they don't even think about it. Of course, when they go to teach it, because they don't think about it, they might not teach all the subtleties. So if you do, you know, if you're one of those guys that skips the older performance videos, don't please go back and watch performance videos. There's a lot of key stuff you will find in there which will make your life easier later on. There you go, sponsored ad by myself. Right. So after lottery prediction, if you can, if you can pick yourself off the floor and carry on, we will have Scrabble. Uh, this can be done over Zoom. Uh, this is very, very clever. Again, a little bit of setup, but it's using the Gilbreth principle with Scrabble tiles. So yeah, you can get away from cards, use the Scrabble tiles, and do a very interesting effect. There is a bit of setup, but like any sort of like parlor, again, this is parlor or stage effect. You could do it walk around, but I think the setup is more geared towards being sat at a table and having a group of people in front of you. Uh, but then sometimes with a bit of thinking, you might be able to work it around as well. So you get four really good effects. However, I did skip one, and this is because it was only referenced that in the uh, the uh, lottery presentation. He talks about a, um, a book test that uses some of the ideas, and he only gives you the performance and very briefly speaks about it. But if you understand the Gilbreth principle, I think you'll be able to sort of look at the performance video and actually work out how it's done and maybe do that yourself. So you actually get five tutorials, but one sort of kind of just hinted at, go do your homework style thing as well. Now the last video is basically the slides. Uh, there's a nice little bit at the very end, which I really like it when people do this with videos, which is if they've used any form of uh, uh, prestidigitation work, uh, you know, like riffle shuffles or certain shuffles or controls or little bits like that. If they've got a video at the end that goes over that just in a little bit more closer, clearer detail, it does help and then in this on this end he goes through riffle shuffles false shuffles false cuts uh very reminiscent of abc by spidey uh that sort of nice little teaching of those little cuts so i like it when do that i mean i understand they might say oh yeah do this do a swing cut but if at the end of the video they can say this is what a swing cut actually is it makes it a little bit easier also you find if they stop to teach a slight in the middle of a tutorial it does break up the flow so i think being able to say look uh you need to do this is this by the way if you need to know this and this we've got it on the video at the back and then carry on it doesn't break the flow and i like the way they've done it on this one as well so after all that hour and a half what do you walk away from well, you do walk away from better understanding of the Gilbreth principle. You have four, possibly five, really strong mentalism style based tricks, which not only don't only use cards, but can use other cards as well. 
and I think you know it's something that um, you may not use these effects straight away all the cats come to join me that's very nice um, but you may find that if you are a bit of a creator or you like to make your own effects having this in your toolkit could come in useful much later on. I'm pretty sure if you gave this to somebody like Lloyd Barnes or Alan Morrison they could probably go away and create 20 really good effects just by using that Gilbreth principle so yeah it's definitely one to look at and I think for the price of £15 even if you only walk away with an understanding of the Gilbreth I think it's worth it I think if you walk away with a couple of the effects hey your quid's in you've done well you've got a bit of bang for your buck as well so yeah Matt Parrot stuff definitely look well worth looking into um, how was the video shot uh, again it's 1914. It's the only thing was I could hear break, um, during some of the tutorials, and it was very tiny. Again, I've got to find some negatives. I've got to pick at something in the video. If it's a really good video, I've got to find negatives to balance it out. Uh, while the sound quality was really good, there seemed to be a lot of traffic sounds coming from outside the front, and these were getting picked up by the microphone. Not enough if you're listening through speakers, but if you're using earphones, you might hear it a little bit more. But apart from that, really good video. Everything was there, spot on two thumbs up so then guys that's a review of um uh, deep breath by matt power over from the 1914 go and check it out have a look at the trailer if you really like it go for it and also go and check out other reviewers as well go and see what other people have said and i've just got the cat my leg being fussed here you did you go look at him oh he's so cute but anyway guys i will let you all go i'm going to go before my voice goes and i will catch you all on the next review so until then guys have a fantastic one and i will see you soon bye for now the cat's sliding off my lap ouch